Breathe it. We have a short video here to introduce a small but important concept, tri-state gates. Tri-state means that there are three possible types of signals as gate outputs. But in binary, aren't there only two possible signals? To understand this, recall that most of our work in this course is in the land of theory. True and false, one and zero, are abstract ideals. The logic values are interpreted from real, physical, analog signals. In most cases, those signals are voltages. Look at this exclusive OR example. Typically, we would place a binary switch, or simply write a zero or one, on each of the input lines. Here, we see electrical symbols. The up arrow represents a voltage source. Here, plus 5 volts, which is common for TTL chips, which we interpret as a true or 1. The bottom symbol represents ground, which we interpret as a false or 0. The result of this exclusive OR operation is 1 or high voltage. Here, the result is seen with this light having electricity to be able to turn on. Logic zero is electrical ground. Think of this as an electron sink. Electrons on a wire connected to ground will be drawn down to ground. Logic one is full voltage. Side note, this could be 5 volts, 12 volts, 240 volts, depends on the system. Think of this as an electron source. Electrons on a wire connected to the source will be pushed away from it because more electrons are pouring out of the source. With that foundation, the third possible signal makes more sense. It is called high impedance and is really a lack of a signal. Think of it as a wire cut off from everything else and just sitting on your desk. Electrons won't be drawn away from it or be pouring on to it. Within an actual circuit, a wire set to high impedance will not be physically cut off, as with a pair of SNPs but it will be electrically cut off, with a transistor directing the flow of electrons to pass by that wire. Do not confuse high impedance with logic zero. Again, high impedance means a lack of logic value, whereas logic zero means false. One gate that uses this high impedance state is the tri-state buffer. Remember that a buffer does not alter the logic value it simply passes the input data through to the output. With a tri-state buffer, there are two inputs, one data and one control. When control or C equals one, the input D, could be a one or a zero, passes straight through to the output Y. But if C equals zero, then that signal is cut off and Y is in a high impedance state. This example shows a tri-state buffer, but you could also have a tri-state AND gate, tri-state NOR gate, etc. If you don't have a tri-state version of those other gates available, you can easily build one. Simply pass the output of the gate into the data input of a tri-state buffer. Tri-state functionality is very useful when multiple devices share a data bus. Generally, only one of those devices should be passing data onto the bus at any one time. To achieve this, all the unselected devices can be cut off by setting their outputs to high impedance. We could also take advantage of high impedance in the design of many combinational circuits. Shown here is the example of a 2 to 1 MUX. On the left is the same strategy discussed in earlier videos. AND gates act as filters to stop the signal of the unselected input. The circuit on the right accomplishes the same thing, but instead of AND gates, it uses tri-state buffers. Let S equal 1. This enables the D1 signal to pass through its buffer. At the same time, that 1 is complemented here to a 0, which cuts off the D0 signal. As a result, the only signal reaching output Q is from D1.